Hey, what's up everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another C major tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're going to talk a little bit more about Visual Studio Code, or what I will call VSC for short, alongside the C major extension that we installed in our last tutorial. Using this extension is probably the quickest and easiest way to get started with writing C major code. So I'll show you how to create your first project, how to run the project within Visual Studio Code, and then we're going to actually export this into a Juice project if you want to create a audio unit or a VST uh, instrument or effect at a later point. And I'll walk you through some of the generated Juice code to give you some helping hints on how you can extend this even further. If you need help getting started with C major, we actually have an active discussion group in our audio programmer discord where the C major team themselves are actually helping people to answer questions about C major and how to get their projects off the ground. If you'd like to join, you can join via our website, theaudioprogrammer.com forward slash community, and I will put that in the video description below. All right, so let's get started. Uh, right now I have opened up my Visual Studio Code and what we're going to do is we're going to create a folder where we're going to save our projects. So what I'll do is I will just click here on the top left and I will click open folder and this will now take me to my finder. I'm going to go into my development folder into my C major folder and I'm going to create a new folder and I will just call this my C major projects. I will create that there. I'll hit open. And now we have this folder here where we can actually create a new project. So one thing, if you're first getting started in using Visual Studio Code and uh, using the extensions is you may do like I did when I first started using Visual Studio Code and uh, go up here and try to type C major and you, you're going to see that you're not going to see anything there. Uh, what you need to do to actually activate a command or activate your extensions is do command shift P. And now you can see that I have a number of C major functions here that I can do. So if I just type C major, then you'll see the options I have here. And we're going to do create a new patch. And now that's brought me to a sub menu here, create a new patch with a demo GUI or create a new patch without a GUI. And I'll do create one without a GUI to keep things simple. And I will call this my first plugin. And we're not actually going to write any code ourselves here. I'm just going to show you how to actually run C major projects within Visual Studio Code and how to actually export this out to uh, a Juice project if you wanted to. So I'm going to create this patch here. And now we see the generated code here that uh, we had last time. So you have the C major patch, uh, the C major, dot C major file here that actually has your code in it. And as you can see, this code is uh, just creating a sine wave that's going to play through. And then you have the C major patch where you can actually change your company name. So I will just change this to uh, the manufacturer to TAP. And one of the most important things that I found in terms of uh, using Visual Studio Code as opposed to using C++ with, with, uh, with Xcode or with uh, Visual Studio is that you need to save the file in order for the changes to be reflected. So if you see this little dot here beside, uh, beside the name of the file, that says that something has changed but you have not saved it yet. So I'm gonna hit Command S to save this and now that's saved, okay? so. Now what I can do is I can actually I can actually run uh, this file and I can run it internally within Visual Studio Code itself. So I will do Command Shift P to bring me up to my menu again, and I can actually hit Run Patch. And now you hear this is actually running, and you can actually see the UI down here in the bottom. And I can change the frequency. And it gives some details and this is really convenient because you can actually run this and test this out right within 
uh, Visual Studio Code itself without actually opening anything else up. Uh, this, of course, would need to change if uh, you were running an effect because you would actually need to have some type of audio player to play th uh, to play some audio through your effect. But for an instrument like this, this is really cool, really convenient to see your changes right away. So another thing that's really interesting is that uh, there's there are some great debug tools here. So let's just take this uh, and I'm going to take out this uh, semicolon and this bracket here. And what you'll see is that if I try to run the code again, that, oh, I'm gonna need to go back here, run the patch. You'll see that even though I've taken, even though I've taken out the, uh, some of the syntax here and the syntax is incorrect that the patch still ran that goes back to what i was saying before that you actually need to save this file and update the file before you actually try to run it or else the changes won't be reflected so as you can see there's a circle here i'll hit command s to save it and now we if we try to run the patch again now we'll see that we get an error here and it says found one bracket when it's expecting two brackets, right? So now I'll put in another bracket. I will save. I will run. And now we see another error where it's expecting the semicolon. So they've put a lot of effort into actually being able to generate sensible uh, error messages here. So now when I save it, we should be good to go again and now we're all good so that's in essence how you open and create and save um, C major projects as you're writing as you're writing code now what I can show you now is what if you wanted to export this to a juice project so once again you would go to command shift P and we can say export patch as juice plugin. Now it's asking me to save this in a location. I'll save this on the desktop. I'll call this my juice project. And I'll hit create plugin project. And now if we go and we minimize this, we will see that it's created a juice project. Right, so this is using CMake, so this is not using the producer, and I will show you what you do from here to actually be able to build your juice project. So, uh, so what I need to do is I will now go to my command line, and first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cd, which is change directory, into uh, this folder, my juice project. Okay, the reason that I'm doing this is because I want to run CMake. Uh, from inside this folder. In order to run CMake, I need to have this CMakeList.txt within this folder, okay? So now I'm gonna to try to, to invoke CMake once I've changed my directory. So now I'm inside this uh, my juice project folder. And now I'm going to invoke the normal CMake command, which is, I've got it saved here. Um, so cmake dash s dot dash capital B build dash G X code. Okay. So that means cmake my source, uh, my source file is in the folder I'm currently in, and I'm going to create all of my build files in this new folder. I'm going to create called build and the, uh, and the generator that I'm gonna run, the IDE that I wanna use is called Xcode. And so once I do this and I hit enter, you're going to see a new folder down here called build, okay? So I know that people that are very experienced with CMake will already of course know this and know this better than myself, but uh, this is for people that are just getting started, okay? So just wanna make sure everybody's following along with us. So as you can see, it generated this build folder and it's got some CMake files in there and everything, except now we've got this error. And it says you must define the juice path variable to point to your local juice folder, okay? 
So if we look in cmakelist.txt and just open this up, so I'm gonna close this out, and we look in here, we'll see that there is this line that says, if juice path uh, add subdirectory else fatal error. You must define the juice path variable to point to your local juice folder. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that we need to actually set our, we need to tell CMake where our actual juice folder is. So the way that we do this is we just type set and we are going to call this juice underscore path. Okay, and the reason that we are calling it that is because that's the variable that it's expecting a variable called juice path. And now one good, one good uh, rule of thumb in, C, in uh, CMake is everything is a string, okay? And what I need to do is I just now need to go and find where my juice folder is. So if I go here to my hard drive, to applications, then down here, I can go to juice. So that's where my juice folder is. Uh, one quick handy little trick is if you don't know how to type how to type that path out manually, you can actually just take this juice folder, so the path that you want, and just actually drag it in there and it'll it'll actually uh, put the path in there. So that's a little handy trick that I've uh, learned over the years. So now I'm just gonna copy this slash applications slash juice. I'm going to put that in these quotes here. Make sure you put the put it in quotes. Once again, with Visual Studio Code, you must save it in order for the changes to be reflected. So I'm going to hit Command S. So now that's saved. I can close this out. And now, if I just do this again, here we go. Going back, back, back. So same command: cmake s dot dash b build dash g xcode. Now. It's gonna, it's gonna build our files here. And hopefully we should get a, uh, a successful completion. Okay, so we're just gonna wait there for a second. In the meantime, there we go. And it says build files have been written to this directory, the directory that we created, right? So it's this build folder. And now we see in here we have a bunch of files that we that I never concern myself with. And we see that there's an Xcode project. Okay, it's an Xcode project because I've asked it to create an Xcode project. And so now I will go ahead and open Xcode, open this Xcode project. And in here I see that there are some different files here. So in my my first plugin are the actual source files. So in here you have the C major plugin. Um, so as you can see, this is the same as the uh, C major patch uh, information that we had before. And what we could do is we could try to uh, build this. So I'm gonna to try to build this in standalone and hopefully it will work for some reason it's saying that my juice header is not found. I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, but let's go ahead and do that. See if we can build it in standalone. Uh, if it works successfully, then we should get a plugin that, uh, that actually builds in standalone. Okay, build succeeded. So I don't know why that weird error is showing up. And so now we have our plugin we see that it's here okay so let's let's analyze what's actually happening under the hood here uh, so if we look here we see that one of the includes that we have is C major uh, slash helper slash C major juice plugin dot header okay so if we go into uh, source so let's see here so into include and then into C major into helpers and then into juice plugin. There's a lot of code in here, okay? But just to, uh, I actually looked at this before. Uh, so one of the things that I, that um, we may look for when with a plugin, if you're familiar with the juice world, is the audio processor editor. So I'm just gonna search that. And we see that here we have 
this uh, editor that's been created. And then if I just scroll up just a little bit, we will see that what has happened is that the generated code uh, is using a uh, Juice audio plugin instance, okay? So if I actually just go to Juice audio plugin instance, we will see that the Juice audio plugin instance inherits from Juice audio processor. Okay, so this is a Juice audio processor. If you're familiar with building plugins in Juice, that's essentially what it is, right? Juice audio plugin instance is inheriting from Juice audio processor. So it's a type of Juice audio processor. So this is an easy way to get the C major generated code into a Juice project. So if you want to, now what I could do is if I wanted to, I could actually go to, um, to this target, which is my underscore first underscore plugin underscore all. And if I wanted to build this into a VST or an AU, then I can actually just hit this and this will actually generate the VST or AU using Juice's um, uh, plugin exporters. So that's the way that you can actually take your C major project and actually export it as a VST or an audio unit instrument. Uh, so that's that's really it for this tutorial. So, so the main things there were just creating your first C major project, uh, actually being able to run the project within Visual Studio Code, and then being able to export it to a Juice project and being able to build a plugin out of that uh, if you would like to. Uh, in our next tutorial, we're actually going to get into the C major language. So we're gonna start working on how to build our first plugin and also a little bit more about the C major language itself and talking a little bit more about what they call processors and graphs and going into detail on the differences between those. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please like and subscribe and I will see you next time.